Hey guys, welcome to my best books of 2021. So if you saw my last video, which would have been my worst books of 2021, feel free to watch that afterwards if you want sort of more of a whole overview of everything I read this year. This is kind of the second part to that where I'm talking about my favourite fantasy, romance, contemporary, all my different kind of reads this year. I've tried to keep the reviews short on each of these and just highlight my favourite things about them because luckily this year has been quite good and I've had a lot of reads that I really, really like. So just like my worst reads video, I'm going to start off with a couple special mentions. These are special mentions because they are incredible amazing reads and all of these I highly recommend to you however I'm just not dying to jump back into the story and I'm not constantly thinking about them except there's one exception on that rule but I will explain that when I get to it so starting off we have The Wall of Winnipeg by Mariana Zapata if you're intimidated by this book trust me I was the same it is super long try not to be because Mariana Zapata's writing entirely makes up for it it is a contemporary sports romance with marriage of convenience and fake dating Mariana Zapata's writing as I said is incredible. It is all showing and no telling. The book is addictive and for a super slow burn romance it is perfectly paced. They didn't even hug until almost halfway through the book and all of the characters felt like such real people. They each had their quirks and their weaknesses and I couldn't even believe they were just words on a page. One of my next special mentions is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is a young adult fantasy with fairies and political intrigue and if you haven't heard of this book already I have no idea what rock you're living under because it is everywhere on YouTube and TikTok. I truly think it deserves the hype that it got. I did actually talk about it in my autumn reading vlog if you want to check that out, but it has incredible whimsical world building. It is a portal fantasy and it's super fleshed out and super unique. I also thought the plot was quite unique for a YA fantasy as well. The next special mention is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is a contemporary women's fiction summary romance. It is a great summer read. I personally read it on holiday, which I just think was the perfect time for it. I thought the characters and particularly the dialogue between them was super well done. It was incredibly realistic and even the text conversations, which I think are a really difficult thing to get across in books, were done really, really well. And there was an incredible depth, especially with the small town vibes and the secondary characters. And I think my favourite part was the tension between the two main characters. Finally, for my special mentions is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So like I said, there is an exception to my special mentions list. This is the opposite of the others. I absolutely adored it but at the time I read it I rated it four stars there was something missing but I have not stopped thinking about this world since I'm dying to get back into it I am dying for a reread and hopefully next year I'm gonna try reread the entire series if you have not heard of this already first of all how have you not but it is a fantasy romance with vampires werewolves unreliable narrator and bodyguard romance but I think when I first read this book I didn't realize how perfect it was to me in terms of my taste in reading I didn't appreciate it at the time as much as I would now it's hard to describe exactly what I love about this book because I read it right as I was getting back into reading but there's just something about the society and the world and Poppy as a narrator and Castile as a love interest and just the characters in this series that really really make it. So now we are done with the special mentions and we are into my best books of 2021. Starting off with one you've definitely all heard of and this is no surprise is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. If you somehow have not heard of this book it is the second book in A Court of Thorns and Roses series. Series. It is a high fantasy romance with fae, enemies to lovers, and lovers to enemies. I'm not going to say too much about this, don't worry, because I'm sure everyone knows it already. And even if you haven't, I don't want to spoil too much because this is the second book in the series. But in general, the world that Sarah J Mass created is so inspiring to me, and I just love the society, the world building, and just the fandom in general, I think is so incredible. And it is something that really motivates me, and it is definitely the book that got me back into reading. The second book on this list is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. This book is a contemporary romance with enemies to lovers, an academic setting, fake dating and dual perspective. You've probably heard of this book again but it is entirely worth all the hype. It had me laughing, it had me crying, I was screaming at all the cuteness and the fluff. This book truly has absolutely everything you could want in it. Also Adam Carlson might be my favourite book boyfriend I have ever read. He's a moody and grumpy character but it didn't seem put on and like fake like it does on a lot of characters 
characters and the academic setting was absolutely to die for. It was different to the sort of dark academia setting, it was much more realistic and motivating and romanticizing without being too over the top. The next book on this list is Guild by Raven Kennedy. This is a high fantasy book which is new adult, dark, has an unreliable narrator, political intrigue, mythology, royalty, everything you could ever want. I found this book was so unique. It had everything I could ever want from a new adult high fantasy without even having a strong romantic element which is for me almost a must in a book but this one seemed to have everything I want without having that in the first book although that does come in later in the series. Firstly the world building is to die for in this series. One of my favorite things about the book was the atmosphere that Raven Kennedy managed to create from the golden castle to the wintry blizzard filled sixth kingdom to the frozen trek between the sixth and the fifth kingdoms. It was incredible and if you're interested in world building at all you need to read the series. Also Oren is an incredible character. Her growth is amazing throughout the book and throughout the series in general and the more and more you learn about her backstory the more I sympathize with her and I understood her and I feel like if you're anything like me you're gonna really be able to relate and sort of understand and appreciate her character. Also this is slightly spoilery but not really you'll find out pretty soon into the book but Midas is a perfectly horrible character. Raven Kennedy does an amazing job at two things simultaneously. Firstly making us realize why Oren loves him so much and secondly showing us how insidious his manipulation is throughout the story. And also I think this book definitely has the chosen one trope done really really well. The next book on this list is The Score by L. Kennedy. This book is a contemporary college sports romance. It's part of a series and all the books have dual perspective. It's probably the series as a whole which is my favorite. I could have just as easily put the mistake on here as one of my top favorites but I find that the series gets better and better with each book. As per usual with the series I'm absolutely in love with the atmosphere of Briar Yu and the off-campus group in general. I think this book is a perfect example of contemporary world building done perfectly. This book had everything from bluff to postgrad anxiety to spice to having me bawling my eyes out while reading it. And Ali, which is the main character, is absolutely incredible. Something you'll notice if you're reading this series from the beginning is there's a lot of I'm not like other girl themes. However, when you get to this book, Ali is absolutely not like that and it is such a breath of fresh air. The next book on this list is The High Mountain Court by A.K. Morford. I'm going to say this again because this is why they're my favourite books, but this book has it all. It has romance, spice, adventure, world building, friendships, royalty, magic, fae, witches, and POC and LGBT representation. First of all, for me, this was perfect for escapism. The world of Ocrith was an amazing place to transport myself as I just had COVID. A quick reminder to wear your masks and get vaccinated. I was really ill and this book absolutely helped me get through it just by having a space I could go to and get absolutely lost in this world. And talking about the world building and the writing, they were so motivating to me personally as they really remind me of my own style and they've really motivated me to get into writing again. The world was so complex and beautiful and something I really appreciated about the world building was how you could really tell that the geography impacted the human elements of the story and the plot in general and there is just an incredible set of characters in this book. Now we are on to the final book on this list which is Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. Last night I just finished reading Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey and I am officially a Tessa Bailey stan. This is a contemporary romance romance with fake dating, small town vibes, childhood crush and dual perspective. Tessa Bailey's writing, as I said, is incredible. It is somehow both hilarious and heart-wrenching and I have no idea how she does it. Also, she has this thing throughout all her stories where the backdrop is so unique. So for example, for example, this one has the backdrop of a small town family run home renovation company. How does she come up with this stuff? And Georgie, the main character is great. She is sweet and caring and ambitious and strong willed. And in general, I think she's a really empowering character. So that is all for this list. I really hope you guys got some recommendations. And please comment your favorite read of 2021 down below. I would love to hear them and get some really good recommendations from you guys. Otherwise, if you did like this video, please do like and please do subscribe. I would love to see you next time. And make sure to check out my worst books of 2021, which will be in the description and linked above. And yeah, thank you again so much for watching.